and welcome to this module in our titration video series. What we're going to cover right now is everything that we are going to build in the rest of the modules in this video series. So we're going to be stepping through the user interface, looking at the different things that we've worked together to build, or that we will be building in the subsequent modules. So, Remy, Same. let's just have a look at what's going to be happening next. OK, tell me, what are we going to deploy here? We're going to deploy sensors. What are we going to do? We're going to be looking at sensors. We're going to be looking at connectors. We're going to be deploying external orchestrators. We will be building application policies. We're going to be building application policies for Kubernetes applications. We're going to be testing policy. And we're even going to be enforcing policy. We're also going to be checking the state of that policy and looking at alerts and sending those alerts out through the system. So it's quite a lot of stuff to do, right? That's a lot. Yeah. And security forensics, touching that as well? Yep, we're also going to be taking a look at that. Is there one area we're not covering? I don't think there is any area that we're not covering. <laughs> That's awesome. So you're going to be working through this with us in the rest of the modules. But this is just to really help you give an understanding of what the end state is going to be. So what we're looking at right now is the agent page. This is where we can get an overview of the different agents that we have deployed. And in the module on agents, we're going to be deploying these enforcement agents here around 35 agents that we have connected to this cluster. So we're going to be dealing with how you install those agents, how you operate those agents, how you check that they're healthy, and continue to make sure that they're checked into the cluster. And I'm pretty sure it must be working at the end, because at least everything is marked as zero for inactive and so on. Everything looks good. Everything is inactive, nothing has failed to upgrade, and all of the policies are in sync. So agent deployment, we're going to cover that. Awesome. We're also going to look at deploying ICE, so how we can use ICE to get visibility from campus endpoints and incorporate that into our segmentation policies. So we'll walk through deploying that ICE connector, configuring the ICE connector, and pulling all of that information in from ICE. Without any agents deployed on the client side when it comes to campus. Yes, that is nothing that we will be covering because we don't require agents on the campus side. So like that one. That. Not going to be a module on that. Perfect. Right, so we have the enforcement agents and we have the ICE agents enabled or the ICE connector enabled. And we also are going to bring in metadata from external sources. We're going to configure inventory uploads, so that's going to be user driven annotations, or in other words, labels or tags. And that's going to be able to help us identify our workloads in our environment using flexible metadata that is not associated with the forwarding attributes, or in other words, the IP address of a workload. So we're going to configure inventory annotations under our inventory upload here. So we'll see the different annotations that we can configure. And we're also going to dynamically pull annotations in from external orchestrators. So we're going to configure pulling in metadata from vCenter and from Kubernetes. Very nice. I mean, that, that's sort of most of the enterprise, right? Yeah, I mean, that covers a huge amount of the different places that you could configure workloads or deploy workloads. And we're also going to touch on some of the other types of external orchestrators that we have available, like pulling in information from AWS, from load balancers, and so on and so forth. Very cool. So we have our ingests from external orchestrators, from agents, and from ICE. OK. We're then also going to work through how we can configure those different entities, how we can configure those agents, how we can set profiles on those agents, how we can ensure that we have enforcement enabled on those workloads. But then let's also look at what we're going to build from a policy perspective, because yeah. that's going to be a huge part of the subsequent modules that you're going to follow along with. So what's the map? Is there some form of map we can look at or something? Yeah, so we can take a look at an overview of all of the different application policies that we are going to work together to build. So we're going to do policies in a couple of different ways during the subsequent modules. We're going to look at the global policies and how you can define policies that apply to every workload to ensure that you have a consistent set of absolute policies applied everywhere allowing workloads to access centralized services, allowing centralized services to access workloads if necessary, and making sure that you have some level of hygiene in your data center, like stock stopping non-prod speaking to prod. So we'll deal with global policies that you might be able to write by hand. And then we're also going to deal with discovering application policies dynamically. And in that case, we're going to be building this banking core prod application. 
So we're going to walk through exactly how we do this in the application dependency mapping module, including automatically deriving the groups of endpoints based on their behavior and the policies that those endpoints should have in place to communicate and be effectively whitelisted. That's going to be policies between internal components of the application and shared services, and also understanding how we can use identity from the campus to enforce policy. In this case, ensuring that only authenticated users, authenticated via ICE and ASA, can access the banking web application. That sounds pretty interesting. Yeah. We're also going to walk through how we can visualize these policies, understanding how different components of the application communicate to each other. For example, seeing how the application speaks to the, to the database, which then speaks to the different replicas of that database. And we'll understand how you can delve deeper into this information to analyze the policies, understand if those policies are going to work, and if there's going to be any application outages suffered by making those micro-segmentation changes, and how you can actually avoid any of those issues when you use policy analysis before enforcing policies. Sound good? Sounds good so far. And then we're actually going to go ahead and actually start enforcing these policies. So we're going to work on exactly what policy enforcement integration is, how we do that policy enforcement via the host-based agent, and the different places in the network that you can also complement that policy with. So we'll talk about a defense in-depth strategy. We'll look at how you can actually monitor those segmentation policies and how you can modify them, or what happens if you do modify those segmentation policies, and what happens next. That's pretty interesting. We're also going to talk about how to connect this actual banking application to a world of containers, for example. We are. So this application is based on virtualized workloads, but we're going to continue and look at a different application. This application here is a data lake application, and that is running on top of Kubernetes. So we're going to explore how Titration integrates with Kubernetes to get you visibility into the workloads that are running on top of Kubernetes, and then also apply policies into that Kubernetes environment so that you can extend your control into Kubernetes. So here, we're actually going to configure the policies for our data lake importer application, both referring to policies inside that kube cluster and also talking to entities outside of that kube cluster, here speaking to the banking web front end component of that core web application. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. What we're also going to do is look at how we can understand the traceability of our applications how we can use the audit trail of Titration to understand exactly who changed what at what particular time. Did they create a new policy? Did they enforce a new policy? Did they delete something from the system? And how you can roll back that potentially if you need to go back to a previous known state of when you were happy with those application policies or a particular object on the system. Yeah? Sounds good. We're also going to go through and configure some connectors. So we're going to configure the virtual appliances that are needed for connectors, that being the titration edge for sending alerts out, and also the titration data ingest for, for bringing in telemetry from external data sources like ASA, as you can see in this screen here. We're going to go configuring that ASA. We're going to configure ICE and syslog. And the reason that we configure syslog is so that we can deal with generating alerts from titration and looking at those alerts and the configuration of those alerts. So here, generating compliance alerts and alerts about the sensors and the status of enforcement and sending that to our syslog server. That sounds a massive program, Tim. <laughs> it does sound like a lot of stuff, and we're not even done yet. We're also going to explore the forensics including the security dashboard, which is going to give us an overview of all of the different components that make up the security score, including the vulnerabilities on your workloads and the potential bits of malware or processes that are running on those workloads that have known bad hashes. We're going to explore the attack surfaces, the network anomaly scores, and the segmentation compliance, and what you can do with that information to go ahead and secure your workloads from that vulnerability perspective. OK. And with that, that is everything that we are going to cover during the rest of the modules in this Titration video series. I hope that you would like to come join us, because it's going to be a fun set of videos to work on. And it's going to be very informative for you, I really, really do hope. So with that, if you would like more information, do follow the rest of this series. Or if not, visit Titration on cisco.com forward slash go forward slash Titration.